What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in. Guys, I need your help with this song by the way. It goes bum bum banana hello whatever that song is guys we're gonna be talking about hollow uh, if you guys know that song I, I know someone knows it out there i've been looking for it i couldn't find it i was gonna make it the entry song but i cannot find it but basically we're talking about hollow and for the first 30 seconds it was gonna be like hello bum bum banana anyways uh what is hollow all right so hollow chain is pretty fire sauce Let's go ahead and go straight to Coin Geckos, guys. Show you that they are getting smashed right now. Nah, I'm just messing with you guys. Um, Hollow Chain. What is Hollow Chain? Well, let's talk about it. So first off, the definition straight on Coin Gecko. Hollow Chain enables a distributed web. Uh, who cares? Whatever. This is what they're doing, guys. They're basically being like Amazon Web Services slash uh, uh, the App Store or Apple. You, you know what I'm talking about? Google Play. Um, the app store, uh, there's no app store.com. Well, maybe there is, or it's probably app dot store. I don't know. <laughs> That's a crypto thing, right? All right. So hollow chain is basically allowing people to make decentralized apps. Why is this important? Well, I'm going to play a video explaining it as well, but if you're on Facebook or Google or Gmail or whatever, are you actually sending those emails or that personal information to the person you want to send it to? Or is it going to a central party? Well, it's the latter. Yes, it's going to a central party. So say you send a message on Facebook to a friend. That friend is not getting the message directly from you. It's going from you through Facebook to your friend. So Facebook sees every message that you have. Same thing with cell phones. Cell phone, Verizon sees every message you have. If you don't believe me, well, <laughs> Guys, there's things called phone tapping, and then there's things called, well, they can get the history of all the phone calls and text messages you had on uh, your cell phone. Uh, it's a lot of fun. No, guys, I don't like centralization. I like decentralization because I like to talk about stuff that's bad. No, I'm just kidding, guys. No, I just like decentralization because I, I see what centralization has done. I own my own business, and it is not fun. Um you got to look at the phrase like if you want to build a company or build a business, you're going to have to own your own payment processor, own your own cell phone provider, own your own marketing team, own your own marketing website, own your own uh, web hosting services, own your own cell phone provider, uh, own your own internet service provider, own your own... Man, there's so many different things, guys. You don't realize that until you get into it. But anyways, guys, let's talk about Holochain. Enough about me. Holochain. Let's go straight on their website. Show them. Hollow is a cloud hosting market for distributed applications. So this is something not like a cash network or like you guys have probably heard about it, Helium. Helium is more so like an internet service provider. This one is cloud hosting. So this is going to be maybe something similar to like a Filecoin or Sciacoin. Except it's not. Those are storage. This is cloud hosting. So this is something that Amazon Web Services will do. Um, they host your website or like one and well, one and one. I think they have their own servicers. Um, I'm pretty sure they just uh, sub that out to Amazon Web Services. I'm I'm not privy to that information, but anyways, you guys get the concept. If you guys want to learn more about them, um, you guys can watch this video. Thanks for watching. We'll see. I'm just messing with you guys. Uh, yeah, you can watch this video as well. Um, but it explains this is what happens. So you have Facebook, which is your centralized app. And in order to message through them, you have to go through Amazon Web Services, which goes through Facebook, and they see all your information. How cool would it be to be able to have an app that's hosted through your computer? And if someone messages you, you have all that information. It is stored straight on your computer. All the information for that application. Now you're like, well, that's a lot of space. How do they do that? Well, you rent out the space from other parties by paying them in hollow fuel. Now, what is hollow fuel? Well, hollow fuel will be switched one to one for the hollow token. There will not be any more in circulation. This is the maximum supply. Yes, guys, this project is not fully active yet. They are working on getting their stuff together. Um, but yeah, they've been working on this for a couple of years, guys. This is the little um, pro uh, host provider, hollow fuel thing, whatever. You can't earn any hollow fuel now. But people trying to get into helium, 
they didn't order it early and now they're earning tokens and now everyone's like whoa you're making bank i'm gonna buy one too oh well um sorry sir uh we're like 56 weeks behind in shipments no it's not that many weeks guys but i'm just being sarcastic um so yeah you can buy this holoport nano uh, you can pre-order it and they will send it out to you it's 119 bucks not too bad um or ten dollars off when you order five to ten of them Whew! good stuff um that's a little bit bearish to me guys um being that this is the place where you order it and it's like okay well are you a decentralized network or centralized hey but you get what you get and don't throw a fit because they are working on becoming decentralized guys they even mentioned in their white paper that they are a bit centralized 25 percent of the token has gone to the team and 75 percent have gone to ICOs slash people who bought in early and slash people who were early adopters and all kinds of stuff. Here's a distribution of their token ops. Get your tokens off Binance. That is not good. They got three on Binance. Man, no more, four, and crypto.com. Guys, not your keys, not your crypto. When do you guys learn? Jeez, man. All right, so back to Holochain. That's a little bit about it, the first part. Now let's go into the second part. Why Holochain? Why do we need this? Well, guys, I already explained it to you. See this big bag uh, building that looks like it's eating people? Um, yeah, that big bag building eating people is like your Google, Facebook, whatever. They control everything. So how do you know that message you're sending to Johnny or Jeff? Like, hey, man, I love you. Or, hey, man, uh, let's, let's um, buy this. Or, hey, man, um, I really am thinking about investing in it. How do you know that that message is getting through? What if Facebook construes, misconstrues the message and says, um, like, what if, what if it's this message? Like, hey, I'm going to be at this building at six o'clock, meet me there, or else we're going to miss a flight. And what if Facebook wants to change this? Guys, this is just crazy um, theory, but it can happen. Facebook decides not to send the message. So now your wife or whoever was coming with you on the airplane doesn't show up. And then you're like, uh, what the pants? Am I going on this vacation with myself? Um, well, it looks like it. Well, the wife will be happy. She'll be like, finally, I get a break from this guy. All right, so this is how it works. You got the robot, the mean guy. This is Google, Facebook, Amazon, whatever. And this is all the people like, oh, I can't connect with Jeff and Johnny. And then this is what Holochain does is like, oh yeah, I can connect with Jeff and Johnny. This is so great. Now, well, this is what the theory of what Holochain wants to be. But how do you know Jeff is Johnny and Johnny is Jeff? Wait, guys, I got that wrong. How do you know Johnny is Johnny and Jeff is Jeff? <laughs> um, well, this is where Holo Holochain comes into play. And it allows people to have a decentralized identity that is online. And now we know is Jeff is verified. Well, that, this would be a Jill because it's a girl. So Jill is verified. Susan's verified. Uh, this guy looks like a Freddy. Freddy's verified. And I'm going to call this guy Yoda. Yoda's verified and whatever. You guys get the point. So what is Holochain for? Well, Holochain is smart for collaboration, communication, economy, edge computing, redundant storage, uh, basically everything, guys. Everything that you guys are running on the internet or even outside of it, it is massive. So guys, think about Uber. You can use this for Uber. Uber is centralized. But now we can decentralize it on our own platform. Or, hey, forget that. How about email? Boom, done. Get it done. Or, boom, how about this? Um, well, not a cell phone provider. I guess you can't do that. But the website for the cell phone provider, that would be cool. Or even like chatbots or um, web store or for your website or all kinds of fun stuff. Just check out their solutions. Guys, they're even doing their own Airbnb thing. You want to know what it's called? It's called Fairbnb because it's fair. You guys can watch these YouTube videos, check them out. Lots of cool stuff. Um, here are a couple of the use cases. They got an energy one, currencies, social impact, local economies, all kinds of good junk. Um, by the way, I have this page open and I'm just going to flip to it and I'll skip back. This is their GitHub, guys. Uh, they aren't crazy active, but they aren't crazy not active. Um, so I would consider this a good GitHub. Good stuff. Thanks, guys. Keep working. This is also something that's cool. This is already open over there. Yeah, that was my email, guys, if you want to contact me. Don't spam me. Um, Holochain is, they have their own patent. So what is this patent? Well, um, I'm going to read it and tell you. Well, no, guys, it's just basically a distributed app framework. So it's everything that they are doing and they patent it. 
it's basically the whole process on how they allow a distributed app framework. And if you guys want to learn more about the patent, it's patent number 10,951,697. So you can learn about it, or you can just keep watching this video and I'll explain to you how Hol Holochain works and you'll be like, hello. And again, they want to tell us how it works again. They like showing a lot of works or, well, we're not going to do this. Actually, we're going to do this though. This is the step by step. So Bob's DNA can bridge. Oh wait, no, that's step 10 guys. So first Bob installs core application of one called DNA. So guys, this is the application that he wants to install that was created from an app developer. So Bob's like, hmm, okay, well, Frank, he created this app. So, hmm, I'm going to go ahead and download this app from this DHT, which DHT is, I don't know what that means. I'm just kidding with you guys. It's called distributed hash table. So this is your table. This is distributed hash. Just look at it like a table. And these guys are eating food together. And they're like, hey, pass the app. And then the guy's like, I don't have apps. This is a table. I'll pass you some chicken. All right, so anyways, guys, Bob installs the core application one called DNA into his hollow chain runtime. The DNA contains functions for writing and accessing data containing or connecting with peers and validating data. So basically, he gives the quote unquote information to run this, but this guy can't technically read it but he knows this is what the application is. So Bob still has his information protected as in AKA his private, not, I wouldn't consider it private information, but his um, privy information. I don't know, information he doesn't want public because he like created it and doesn't want people to copy it. Anyways, on application startup, Holochain creates a source chain, a journal for all the data his DNA will create. The journal is a hash chain. So basically any hashes that he makes with his journal will be signed by his private key and it allows it to go on there. And yes, guys, this chain is immutable, but the code can be edited. So if there's like an issue with his code, he'll be like, bro, don't use that one anymore. It's still out there, but you should use this one. At the beginning of the source chain, is the fingerprint of the DNA. It shows Bob's computer has seen the rules and agrees to abide by them. Yeah, of course, Johnny, because he's passing the chicken and eating the feed. After the DNA fingerprint becomes an optional membrane proof, applications that restrict membership, the journal entry shows that Bob is allowed to join the network. The reason why is because he has a signed private key, etc. You guys get it. And this little private key signing thing that he has that it only his uh, digital identity can sign and give verifies that this is coming directly from Bob. So now Bob is like, bro, I'm trying to join this peer to peer network you got. So he submits some journal entries to the distributed hamster tokens. No, I'm just kidding. A distributed hash table. If his peers determine they are valid as in from him, they'll admit him into the network. And all these peers he's sharing with, they also have their own ID. So do keep that in mind, guys. Just like you have your own wallet address. So Bob starts using this application, writing data to his chain. Public data is shared to the DHT to be validated and stored while all the private data stays on his device. So he can be using this application. He can be building all kinds of things on it. Or a good example of this is like creating their own website and you publish it. Just like when you publish your website on Wix, if you guys don't know how that works, well, try it, play around with it, or watch a video on it. Or a good example of this is YouTube. If you upload a YouTube video and edit it on there, well, it's not your video. That's YouTube's video. So now with this, you're on your own server, that website you're on, you own all those interactions you're doing on there, and if you want to publicly post them, go for it. You can publicly post it, and then that's what will be publicly posted. If you don't want to display all the private information, don't do it. You don't have to. A good example of this is like using Wix. If you have a website, you're building your website and you're still editing it and there's like a bunch of typos, you haven't fixed them yet, but you want to go to bed, you just leave it as a saved draft and don't publish it. That way the misedits aren't on the website. That's a good example I can relate to you. So Bob and his peers maintain their own DHT shard containing copies of small random portions of the blockchain or the public data that has been published. The reason they do small random portions is to help with scalability, guys. 
Bob's DNA can bridge to share other functionality and data. Each DNA has its own separate network and access is controlled by a consistent, compliant, by a consistent based capability security system. All right, guys, that was a lot of junk. What the pants? Just remember this. Just remember this building eating people. This is getting rid of that building and allowing these people to like do this stuff. Share chicken and steak across the table. So this is like similar to a DAG, but it is not a DAG. I'll show you guys a quick um, little chart uh, breaking down the differences. It is not proof of work. It is not proof of stake. Basically how it works is this guy borrows uh, or uses his junk or his website or whatever he publishes, pays in hollow tokens and this guy gets hollow tokens and he pays this guy for hollow tokens. And that's how it works guys, or hollow fuel if you want to call it that. Hollow fuel and hollow tokens or hollow is the same exact thing. So you guys can look at it similar to like a DAG, like my transaction will verify your transaction, which verifies that guy's transaction and so on. So it's almost like a parasite as well. So like if this person interacts with this person and this person interacted with this person, now all three of these are linked, even though this guy never transacted with this guy because the linkage is through this guy. If you guys didn't get that, I'll explain it again. This guy is now connected with this guy without even transacting with him. The reason why is because this guy transacted with this guy, and now this guy said, hey, I'm gonna do business with you too. So now all three are linked, even though only this guy did business with these two guys. I know it's a little bit complex to understand, but replay that clip I just stated to. So the main difference between Holochain and other blockchains is this DHT stuff, like this distributed hash table. And why is this different? Well, this means individual nodes themselves can verify and confirm transactions and a broadcast to the rest of the network for transparency. It, this obviously, to me, is not gonna be as secure as something like a Bitcoin or an Ethereum, but it is a little bit more scalable. So do keep that in mind, guys. You have a scalability trilemma, um, and this is solving the scalability, or I'm sorry, not scalability trilemma, but the blockchain trilemma. And this is sol solving the scalability solution. And they also do this by sharding and hash tables. I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys this little infographic. So you got Holochain, you got Hashgraph, DAG, and blockchain. So you guys understand blockchain. If you don't understand what blockchain is, well, you can pause the video and take a look. With Holochain, you are having each node processing their own ledger. So like with DAG, another guy processes his other thing and so on. So it's not just one guy. Nodes run on individual chains, so they don't need to validate transactions. However, with this one, the previous transaction validates the succeeding to achieve consensus. So basically, I buy a chicken for a dollar and then I go buy another chicken for two dollars. I now have minus three dollars in my wallet because that one dollar transaction was superseded by the two dollar transaction. If that doesn't make sense, I, I'm bad with examples on that one. But basically, all you need to know is it's just like a ledger and an ongoing bill like if you're at a bar or something. And on Holochain, the data is distributed among the various nodes. So like that little device that we showed you in the beginning, that's where people are like doing their junk and getting paid a hollow, uh, hollow fuel uh, for basically hosting and serving and providing services. No need for miners because nodes process their own transactions. So you make it, you better break it. No, I'm just kidding, not break it. You make it, um, you pancake it, whatever. And of course, they're gonna say Holochain is the best known network on this platform. Well, because Holochain is something they came up with, but okay. <laughs> so the applications, the H apps, are going to be different applications that are built on the network. So these are gonna be like uh, your Play Store and App Store. This is basically just like a decentralized app store. Just keep that in mind. Here's some examples. You got Red Grid, you got Hum, you got Fairbnb, you got Producers Token. Anyways, guys, you guys get the concept. Now, here's a couple things I want to show you guys. 
pitching it as being. I'm gonna go player. ahead and play this video for you. I think you guys should listen. Take a listen. Chain actually gets it right. So I just described Holo Host, right? This peer-to-peer -peer cloud computing application. Uh, but the truth is, the thing that's really interesting to me and pretty much everybody else isn't that app. It's the larger pattern that that app is enabling and supporting this Polo Chain infrastructure, this new way of running applications with no organization in the middle, no company in the middle. Now, Holo, Chain, Holo Host is a version of that, but Holo Chain is this more general pattern that enables anybody to run an application using just the devices of the users themselves. So that means you can do Twitter with no company in the middle, Facebook with no company in the middle, Uber with no company in the middle, Airbnb with no company in the middle. And it's this, this whole company in the middle thing has come into focus recently with Cambridge Analytica and Facebook and the whole, all of the mess around surveillance and us being watched and manipulated by these companies that sit between us in order for us to communicate. But all of that is just a side effect of the way that the web is architected. It wasn't the intention, but it was a, a consequence. When you run a website, you have to have a web server. Because when you type in a URL, it actually no sends dip. you to a specific machine. Right? And initially we thought, oh, this will be me sending things from my machine to your machine. But people figured out pretty quickly it's a pain in the butt to keep a web host, a web server running. And so very quickly they started offloading those web servers to other folks. Hey, I'll pay you, my web server company. And then eventually people figured out, man, it's nice if you don't have to set up your own web page, your own blog. Maybe somebody else could do a blog service. And all of a sudden it's not us talking directly to one another. It's me sending a message to Facebook and then Facebook sending that message to you. Ain't that right. You replying to Facebook and then Facebook forwarding that to me. It's this organization in the middle passing notes for the entire system. That's a centralized architecture. And so the... All right, Tino. Thanks for the alpha. to do this, guys. What is Holochain? Nah, guys. Uh, we aren't going to worry about it, but I will read this part. Holochain is open source framework for building fully distributed peer-to-peer -peer applications. So remind you, or remember guys like the App Store. Here's a couple of use cases. Social networks, supply chains, peer-to-peer -peer platforms, rating systems, collective intelligence, collaboration, all kinds of stuff. Alright, bear with me guys. We almost done. It's okay. We come to the last lap. I need to go to page 22, guys, of this white paper and show you some... Well, actually, here, so you guys can see a picture of how the ecosystem looks. You got this cool, neat setup, man. Zoom, zoom, zoom. You got user and user participants finding and request apps. Oh, application. Oh, yeah. I'm going to download this... What is that game? Flappy Bird or something? That popular one? Okay, so you got developers making these apps. Then you got the application providers spending hollows for hosting. And these guys receive hollow for hosting. And then you got like, oh yeah, we say, yeah, you want this app? Get Flappy Bird. And they say, dude, we want Happy Bird, not Flappy Bird. So these application providers are like, cool, good stuff. Thanks for the review. They get the review, then de the developers are like, bro, we need to make Happy Bird. So they make Happy Bird. Anyways, you guys get the concept. Let's zoom out. All right, we're going to scroll down to page 22. Because 22 is cool. Nah, guys, 7's cool. 7's fire. All right, so here's a couple of examples of applications they actually donated to. These are a couple of the donations and funds that they raised. So Holochain is contributing as well. They donated about $5 billion towards other projects. But here's a couple of examples of what they are doing and what they can provide. Why is this important, guys? Well, if all of these guys are running on AWS or centralized servers, are they really decentralized? No, you're as strong as your weakest link, guys. So Hollow is not trying to beat the big guys. They are trying to help the big guys win. Thank goodness. Now, here are some risks of what will happen. First is something else beats them. Something else makes a better service, makes a better product, and hey, it can happen, because these guys aren't even live yet. We make it first to the market, but have a huge critical bug and failure. Yes, anything happens, guys. That's why I'm so bullish on Ethereum, because it works. Um, Cardano and Polkadot are awesome and all. They're great promises, but they are not fully functional like Ethereum. 
Yes, Ethereum has issues, but it works. Same thing with Bitcoin. Bitcoin has issues, but it works. It gets the job done. We fail to deliver on promises. Hopefully, these guys didn't promise a bunch. Well, yeah, they did make some pretty good promises, but we'll see what happens. Hollow makes up the market, but users are actually afraid to jump from centralized to fast and scalable dApps. Yes, this is so true, guys. Uh, so true. That's why developers are still on Ethereum because they know it works, they want to use it, and they also want to support Ethereum because that's where the network effect is, guys. Uh, Hollow grows a th thriving dApp ecosystem, which means they do good. And then another one is Hollow explodes into a massive crypto ecosystem. This is the best option. This is where they're like, bro, you should have invested like everything in them because we were like the next Amazon, Google, Facebook, Apple, everything all in one. Anyways, you guys, you get the point. Um, not financial advice, guys. Do what you want. I'm not going to tell you what to do. I'm just telling you guys about the project. There are risks involved, especially since this project is not live yet. We just talked about the risks, guys. So don't back up the truck and do back up the truck or, guys, it's not financial advice, so I, I can't tell you what to do. I'm sorry. Here are the profits that Amazon currently makes in millions. Now, you guys are looking at 4,000 million. What is that? Well, 4,000 million is $4 billion. And wait, guys, this is per quarter, and this is 2016. <laughs> guys, this is like way more than it is now. <laughs> um, here's the monthly transaction volume. Uh, just so you guys can see, this, these numbers are like redonkulous. They're way higher than this. Uh, we already talked about the token breakdown, guys. Um, oh, you guys probably want to see the future. The future, well, the future already passed, so good job, guys. Um, they did not, well, I think they do have the test net running, actually, so I, I won't say they didn't, but anyways, guys, you guys can look into this, do some more research on it. Just making a quick entry video on it, guys. Me, personally, I'm just telling you what I'm doing. Me, personally, I want to wait and see what happens. I like to look at projects that are already promising or delivered. Um, we are moving through this bull market. Um, so right now it is a little more risky as you guys saw on the charts, but we did have a good pullback. So I don't know, it could be a buying opportunity, but it could be a selling opportunity. Not financial advice, I don't know. I'm not a chart analysis, nor do I wanna be. Uh, I like to talk about different projects and that's what I like to do. Uh, back to the white paper, where is this junk? Oh, here it is. Tokenomics, simple tokenomics guys. There's literally two tokenomics, 25% to the team, 75% to AKA early developers, um, or, or early adopters, uh, early buyers, and so on. Uh, yeah, that's it, guys. Get your tokens off Binance if you got them on Binance. Progress chapter 27 versus, no, guys, we're out of 27. We're actually, let's go back. Let's go to 26. 26 is cool. Like snow in summer, rain in harvest. Honor is not fitting for a fool. I believe it. Thanks for tuning in, guys. We'll see you in the next one. If you guys enjoyed this video, if I bored you too much or if this was like a horrible overview, go ahead and smash up the likes and subscribe to the channel anyways and leave some comments below that are encouraging as in like, hey, dude, you kind of presented this wrong. Or they can be discouraging and be like, bro, um, that was the worst overview ever. But at least give me some alpha. Tell me what I should do better. Don't just be like, bro, you suck. Tell me why. <laughs> Give me an explanation so I can make it better. And yeah, I know. My microphone always stinks somehow. I already bought a new microphone. I'm, I'm horrible at picking microphones. Anyways, guys, thanks for tuning in. If you guys want to join the Digi Squad, there's a link in the description below. It's got the Telegram chat. You can ask, us, ask some junk. We got some really brilliant minds on that Digi Squad. A lot more smarter than me. Um, thanks for tuning in, guys. And if you want to support the channel, link's in the description below. You get a reward, I get a reward. Win win, bomb bomb, peace out. Thanks for watching, guys. If you guys are new to the channel, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button and hit that bell notification. That way, you guys can be ahead of the game every time we make a new video.